Okay, let's look under the Mix button. When you want to vary the mix for all of the presets, that is, globally, uh, you press the Mix button. Voices. Uh, that is the level of the harmony and doubling, For again, for all the presets. You can turn them all down, or you can turn them up a little bit from where they were uh, programmed at the factory. Generally, you'll want to leave that at 0 dB, but if you get in a place and you feel it you know, you really want to emphasize the harmonies and doubling for a bit, you can turn it up. And again, that's for all the presets. So, the next one is delay reverb. Delay and reverb, um, the settings that are in the presets can be raised in level or lowered overall. Okay, let's go to the next one, the guitar. If your guitar is connected here, but the through is not connected to your amp, then your guitar is coming out through the processing in Voice Live Touch and coming out the outputs. And we can control that level in the internal mix of the guitar here. Like that. Moving on, like I said, Voice Live Touch has guitar effects in there. It has a nice modulation uh, processor and it also has reverb. You can control the level here. If you had uh, like an iPod or something like that connected into the 8th inch connector, aux in connector in the back, you could control its level here in the mix. And uh, USB, the same for USB. If you have a, a laptop playing files and you're connected via USB into Voice Live Touch, Voice Live Touch can be your I.O. device and you can control the level of the audio coming in from the laptop here. And that's it for the mix menu. Those are the uh, those are the only ones you can uh, adjust. Now, when you hold the mix button, you go into the setup menu. There are three setup menus. There's the what we call setup, and then MIDI, and then advanced. Right now, we are in the setup menu, and the first parameter is phantom power. So if you have a connector, I'm sorry, if you have a condenser microphone and it needs phantom power, turn it on. Um, and tone. Tone is the feature that makes your voice sound great using uh, compression and uh, adaptive EQ. And you've got several settings you can use here. Off. And then you've got the normal one, which is the one I prefer. Oops, I went out to there. Let's go back in. There, there's our tone style. And we can go to this one, which is less bright. Uh, this one, uh, normal plus warmth. Warmth adds back a little bit of bass frequencies without adding mud. And, you know, there's some ones here that don't have the gate turned on. The gate allows you to... Um, it filters out some of the background noise. Anyway, let's go back to Tone Style 1. Leave it there. Um, pitch correction. You can add a little bit of pitch correction if you want that actually gently puts your voice in tune chromatically for any note in the scale. All 12 notes. You don't have to set key and scale. And it's on all the time. And it just makes it just sound better. And also, if you hear yourself singing with a little bit of, say, 50%, of this um, pitch correction. Um, we call it autochromatic pitch correction. If you hear yourself singing with that, you actually do sing a little bit better. You sing a little bit more in tune. Guitar effect style. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, what is this one? Tap it to see. Thickening plus hall. Here's what it is. Yeah, we can change that. That's just hall with no thickening. And then that is thickening plus room. You can hear it's a short room. Just the room on its own. So there's a few styles you can pick for your guitar. That reverb sound is every bit as good as the one that's used on the vocals. It's a separate one, but it's a very high quality reverb. Sounds really nice in stereo too. This is your output configuration, whether you want to go outputter to stereo, mono, or dual mono. You, saw, you heard my voice go to the other side there. Stereo, of course, stereo outputs. Now, when you use the XLR in the back there, there's a single XLR that you would connect to your mixer, and you would have to go into this menu, the setup menu, and set it to mono, like that. Because if you set it to stereo, some of your, some of your delay effects may sound odd, and your reverb, you're only getting one side of it, and if your harmonies are panned left and right, you only get one of them. So you want to set that when you're, when you're using just the individual output, or you're using one of these... Um, quarter-inch outputs, 
you want to send that to mono. Now dual mono is an output mode where uh, the guitar goes out one side and uh, your voice and its effects go out the other side. USB, this is a way of configuring USB when you're recording. So uh, right now the output is stereo, so if you're recording to a laptop and you're singing and playing and you've got stereo effects going on, everything goes out in stereo, out the USB jack. But if you set it to a track and you're singing and playing a guitar, the guitar goes to the right side and your voice and all its effects goes on the left side. Actually, there are no effects, I should say, in the track. This is so that you can lay down dry tracks of your lead voice and the guitar so that later on you can bring them back in to uh, process as uh, guitar and um, vocal tracks. And then there's insert. Uh, you know you can have, if you ha already have a guitar track and a vocal track, recorded on a laptop or uh, a digital audio workstation, you can send via USB the vocals to be processed by the harmony and all these effects, and the guitar to control the harmony and to have its own processing as well when you use the USB insert like that. I'll set that back to stereo. Moving on, you've got a couple of global parameters here. Tap global means that if you're in a preset and you set the tap tempo on the delay to some certain value, all the presets that have delay set to tap tempo will go to that same tempo. That's kind of cool when you're in one song and you're using dis different presets in that song. You can keep the delay to the same tempo. Key and scale global, same thing. If you're in, uh, you've set to natural play to scale in harmony and it's set to say E minor, you can change presets and all the presets that are set to that, set to scale, will go to the same key and scale without changing back to a default that was maybe programmed into the preset. Okay, moving on to natural play, global. Natural play, when it's off, looks at all the inputs and determines which one is connected and making noise at that particular moment to control the harmonies. It's kind of an automatic function. If you want to, if you want to ignore one in favor of another, for example, you want the guitar to um, only be the only uh, one that's controlling harmony. Even though MIDI may be coming in or you might be playing in some aux, uh, something in the aux in, you want all those to be ignored in favor of the guitar to control harmonies. You would set that to guitar or MIDI or aux in or what have you. I'll set it to off. And this is where you define the functions on the switch 3 foot switch that you uh, use to turn harmonies off and control looping. And so this is the first one, harmony, favorite, and loop. So the left button turns harmonies on and off, the uh, middle button uh, cycles through the favorites, the five favorites, and the last one is a loop that you can start and stop loops and you can create new loops. And of course you can change different options there. There's all sorts of different um, combinations of those three settings that you can use on a Switch 3. Uh, MIDI channel, of course, if you're using a MIDI keyboard to control um, voice life touch, of course you have to match the channel that way. And that's it for that menu.